everyone, welcome to Be Good Farm. My name is Heather and today I'm gonna to be planting some cool flowers. So normally with some cool flowers, you can plant them in the fall. You can start them in the fall, plant them out, and then they'll overwinter and you'll get earlier spring blooms. I missed that window and I honestly just didn't wanna mess with hoop houses and trying to keep them from getting frosted when we get our, our ice storms. So I'm just gonna start my cool flowers in early spring. So some of my cool flowers are going to be just for my landscaping and for my medicinal garden and a lot of them are actually going to be for my cut flower garden. I'm going to be starting them in some, these are soil blocks here, I've already put them out. The reason why I use soil blocks is because I plant so many flowers <laughs> and so many vegetables that I literally, I do not have room for a bunch of, of seed um, trays in the greenhouse I just I just would run out of room really quickly and also it saves soil when you're using the soil trays you go through a ton of soil these ones help the um, soil blocks so it saves on soil saves on material you use less plastic so I can use this tray that I'm using year after year um, I have my soil blocker tool here in this and this is pretty much all you need for the materials you don't have to store a bunch of trays which can get bulky and if you put them in the sun or the heat they end up crinkling and cracking and just degrading over time I do have plug trays um, they're from bootstrap farmer they've held up really well for me but still I tend to just have been gravitating towards this more and more um, also with the soil blocks um, you don't tend tend to get your plants root bound so that's when the roots start spiraling around in your little plug tray which actually stunts the growth and can be uh, damaging for the stem length and the productivity of your plant. This um, allows the plant to air prune so once the plant um, hits the edge of the soil and then out the roots will stop growing and they'll find different areas in the block to be able to um, take over and they'll start growing underground and there will be like this inner web of roots underneath and it's really awesome. So um, my plants have been much healthier and most of the plants um, I can grow into these tiny blocks and actually put those out when they're ready and if I need to keep them longer in longer than like six weeks in my greenhouse once they've sprouted then I can pop them up into larger um, soil blockers. The one that I typically use is this one and a half inch and then I also have a two inch one. And so the great thing about the soil blocker here is as I pressure it you can see there's these little knobs here which are the same exact size as a little soil block. So this will create a larger soil block with a little divot in it the same size as this so when I want, I want to pot up I just take this tiny soil block and pop it into the larger one um, and it just saves so much room. Ultimately it's a healthier plant and honestly it's the space that was the kicker for me. <laughs> space, less materials, and then I don't have plastic just you know getting all crispy and uh, crumbling away in my greenhouse because I don't really have anywhere else to store it. I'm going to go ahead and start sowing these seeds and as I'm going I'll tell you a little bit about each of the flowers that I'm growing. Hope you enjoy. Here we have some yarrow, the summer pastels, the summer berries, and the Parker's yellow. It is a perennial, and in the days to maturity are usually about 120 to 130. And some yarrow is a second year blooming, and some are first year. So if you're choosing yarrow, um, be sure to look out for that. Um, it does need a chlorine tab because it does make the water a little bit dirty. It is about 28 to 30 inches in height. You space them about 12 inches apart. And every couple of years, you can actually just take the plants that you have, dig them up, split them, and then double your crop. The base life is about seven to 12 days. Will produce really well for you the first year and the second year, even better. You can expect a flush in the summer and then maybe another smaller flush later on in the fall. 
This is Dianthus. It is a sweet William. It is a tender perennial, so it uh, the weather really affects this plant. It does like cooler weather. The sweet series does like the cold. If it gets too hot, then um, your stem length will be compromised and it might not send up as many flowers. Um, you don't really succession plant this one unless you're going to plant it in the fall for early spring and then you can plant it again in early spring and then maybe a couple weeks out um, after that but after that I would only um, plant the Amazon series or the series that actually likes the heat. You space these ones out about six inches in the cut flower garden. They have very fragrant blooms which is wonderful and you plant them out at about six inches apart and they get about 18 to 36 inches tall. Really great stem length. Matricaria or fever pew is a perennial. It's a tender perennial. It will come back every year depending on your zone and it will give you a big flush in the summer and then maybe another smaller flush in the small. It also needs a chlorine tab because it makes the water pretty dirty. Um, the vase life is about seven to 10 days um, and the plant spacing is about eight to 12 inches. This is not one that you can really succession plant unless you're doing it in the fall, the early spring, and then maybe a few weeks after that. Um, but it really just sends up a flash when it's going to, uh, depending on the weather. I also use a pump type mister to uh, water the seedlings uh, to help them to come into better contact with the soil and to also make sure that that um, top layer is damp. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here. You don't want to use an overhead watering can with soil blocks. Violas or Johnny Jump Ups are just amazing. They're about uh, maybe 8 to 12 inches tall. They will reed seed themselves, so put them somewhere where you want them to, you know, just kind of take over. But they are not a cutting flower. They're just beautiful, great for pollinators, and I like them in my flower beds. They're just the prettiest little colors. Mountain mint is a great greenery. It doesn't spread as crazy as regular mint, but it will still spread, so make sure you put it in its own little spot. Um, it will give you multiple stems per plant. Base life is about seven to 10 days. And overall, it's just a really great, easy perennial greenery. The plant height is about 12, sorry, 24 to 36 inches and you plant them about 12 inches apart. You can harvest this one throughout the season. Rutabecchia, if you haven't grown it, it is amazing. It can give you multiple stems per plant. Uh, you can plant this one in the fall, in the early spring, and then maybe at the end transplant it out about six to eight weeks after the last frost to get a little bit of a succession in. Um, but it is a cut and come again, so the more you pick it, the more that you will get. So make sure you to keep it deadheaded. Um, the plant height, this is actually quite tall. It's about 48 to 60 inches and you can plant them about 12 inches apart. Um, recommended is 18 to 24, but you can push that a little bit. The base life on this is excellent. It's about uh, 7 to 10 days. Rutabecchia is a day length sensitive plant, so it requires a certain amount of hours in order to bloom. So that's why you can only get a couple of uh, successions. And if you plant it too late out in the summer, then you just, it might grow, but then it won't get any blooms. But because it is a perennial, it should come back the next year and bloom uh, for you pretty early. Straw flower is an annual. It takes about 75 to 80 days to maturity. You do get quite a few stems per plant. It can be succession sowed and it will bloom uh, throughout the summer if you do. Uh, a lot of people use this as a dried flower. You want to be able to harvest this one when about two to three layers of the petal have been unfolded but before the center is fully opened.
as I'm planting, it's a lot to keep up with every single different kind of seed, what the planting depth is and whether or not they need light. So here I'm just double checking uh, my references to make sure I'm doing it right. Salvia does get quite tall. It I'd say maybe 36 inches. It has a really, really beautiful blue color and it can be used as a cut flower. I noticed that you really need to cut it in the cool of the day, otherwise it wilts pretty bad. Uh, you want to let it rehydrate, but it adds just a really, really beautiful blue color to the bouquets. It adds just something a little bit different with that blue colored spike. I love it so much and it lasts a long time in the vase as well. Orlea is a beautiful cut flower. It's actually supposed to be direct sowed, but I'm going to try this out and see how it does. Um, it is quite a wimpy flower, so that's why I'm just putting it into my landscaping just to see how it goes because on its own it can actually do quite well, but when you're cutting it, it does need extra conditioning, um, which means it does need to sit in the pots of nice cool conditioned water for about 24 hours uh, to prevent wilt. It's raining outside. <laughs> And look who's coming to protect me from the greenhouse. From the greenhouse. You want to come in? You want to come in? You all wet? You're knocking everything around. This is Maggie. Maggie, say hi to you. Say hi to the camera. She looks. She's a good dog, huh? Look, here's another one. You want to come in? Cookie? You want to come in? Your girl sick of the rain? the video you'll see me using vermiculite. Uh, this I use this instead of putting extra soil on top because that makes it a little bit messy with the soil blocks. This vermiculite, it looks like glitter, cold glitter, um, but it's not. So it helps to prevent algae growth on top of the soil blocks and it helps to, uh, it's a nice fluffy soft material for the um, tender seedlings to be able to pop through when they're germinating. Some need extra depth uh, about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. That's what those little circles are to help uh, get that extra soil on top. And then some are just being dusted. Uh, that's because those ones need light to germinate. But the vermiculite helps to uh, make that seed come into better contact with the soil so that it can germinate. So it's taken about three days, about an hour each session to plant all these flowers. I'm finished. Go ahead and like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.